Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. So in this video, we'll discuss the third problem of Lead Code Weekly Contest 346. It's a medium level problem. The first two problems were easy. Uh, the fourth one is a good one. That's a hard one. And this one is a, I would say different from what you get in the other contest, right? So let's see what, what it says. So the problem name is find the punishment number of an integer. Given a positive integer n, return the punishment number of n. Okay, what is the punishment number? So the punishment number of n is defined as sum of squares of all integers i such that obviously i lies between 1 to n okay and the decimal representations of uh, representation of i into i can be partitioned into contiguous substrings such that the sum of integer integer values of this substring equals i okay a long statement <laughs> let's see what it is trying to say okay so this is the value n okay the punishment number for this will be addition of squares of some numbers okay those numbers are in range this 1 to n okay so in short if n equals to 10 consider all the numbers in range 1 to n or 1 to 10 okay now what you do start picking every number like for example st pick 1 okay what is the square of 1 it is 1 into 1 okay represent this in the form of string right so 1 is represented in the form of string now can you partition this string such that in, in a single, uh, you know, in a single substring or multiple substring such that the sum of those values give you this initial value, right? You started with this, you got the square, converted the square into string and now you partition this string to again uh, and, and basically add that to again get the initial value. So yes, if I just pick this string, it is one, okay? No need to partition it, obviously you just have a single character. So this one and one are equal. So this is a valid number. What do you will do? So since this is a valid number, you'll you'll add the square of this number in your answer. Okay, let's move ahead. The second number is two. The square of two is two into two, that is four. Now four is a string. Can I partition four and add them such that I get two? No, it is not possible, right? It is not possible. So again, we have three. So use three into three is nine. Can you partition nine to get three? No, that is not possible. So you keep on doing it. Let's move to nine. Okay. So square of 9 is 9 into 9, that is 81. Now can you partition 81 such that you get 9? Yes, you can do that. Partition it like this. One string is 8, one string is 1. Now when you add them, 8 plus 1, when you add those integer values, what do you get? You get the initial value 9. So 9 is also a valid number for you. So what you will do? You will add the square of 9 in your answer. Let's go to the next value, 10. Square of 10 is 10 into 10, that is 100. Okay. Now, can you partition this string such that you get 10? Yes, I can do that. 10 comma 0, right? First two characters form 10, this last character form 0. Just add them, you get 10. So these are the valid characters. So what I'll do? What will the valid characters? 1, 9 and 10. So I'll add the square of 1 plus square of 9, that is 81, plus the square of 10, that is 100. So I get 182 as my answer and 182 is my answer, right? You only consider the values which are in range 1 to n, okay? Let's see one more example. Let me just erase it. Otherwise, it will be too much content on, on the same screen, right? So probably, yeah. Now, n equals to 37. What I'll do, I'll consider all the numbers from 1 to 37, closed interval, okay? Again, 1, 9, and 10 were valid. What are the other numbers that are valid? So we see that the directly the next number that is valid is 36, okay? Why? 36 into 36 gives you 1, 2, 9, 6. Can I partition 1296 says that they add up to 36? Yes. This is 1. This is 29. This is 6. Getting it? So this comes out to be 1 plus 29 plus 6. That is 36. Just see that is what you wanted. So now 36 is also a valid number. What do you will do? You will add the square of 36 in your answer. So this time your answer will be 1 plus 81 plus 100 plus 1296. That is 1478. That is what we need to do, right? Now, there are a couple of things that we can see here. Uh, so how we can approach this problem. The first thing is finding valid numbers, right? First thing is finding valid numbers. And then the second thing is I can find all the numbers which are within my range. Okay. So we can see here the property which makes a number valid. We know it, right? Uh, convert it into I square, convert that into string and try all the possibilities of partitioning it and see whether you get the initial number or not. So. So we write a utility, utility function, I'll show you that. We'll write a utility function to do that. That will obviously use backtracking, right? Because you check all the possibilities. For example, if I have a string one, two, three, 
nine six something like this so what i can do i can partition it at every position right i can partition it like this that okay one is a separate string okay and suppose the sum that i wanted was suppose um 80 just taking an example right that means okay this this example won't work <laughs> okay let me take a proper square okay i started with 36 36 into 36 gave me 1 2 9 6 okay i want so look this is the sum i start partitioning it okay i start partitioning it what i want i want 36 as the sum so i start with 1 2 9 6 i partition it okay i have made one as a separate string so now what i want to do i want to partition 296 such that their sum is 35 why 35 because one is already gone the initial requirement was 36 minus the current sum okay now i solve for this 295 so i can partition it like this that okay separate two now when you once you separate two you'll solve for 96 with a sum of 33 33 is the requirement right because two you subtract uh, 2 from 35 right because 2 is a string this is another possibility now the next possibility is, is you don't consider just one character rather consider like this 29 so you have to solve for 5 okay and what is the remaining sum so i started with 35 sorry it is 6 29 and 6 so the remaining sum will be this was 29 plus 136 so 6 the remaining sum is 6 so you try, try out 6 with 6 right basic backtracking obviously uh, backtracking is something that i cannot explain you in this video right <laughs> that is a separate topic but in short i'll be doing it so how you solve these type of question is because the constraint is low that do a pre-computation just see do a pre-computation so the first thing that you do in your function is this is one of the ways to solve it compute all the valid numbers right so just see what i'm doing i call this function this is my main function punishment number i call this function that pre-compute valid numbers now i add one in my valid number now i check for all the numbers from 2 to 1000 okay i can check from 2 to n as well yes that in that is, that is an optimization but yeah you do that now you call the function is valid pass the square and pass the number right pass i that is the required sum now if this number is valid you add that in your list okay how to check validity that i'll tell you okay now this function call will give you all the valid numbers in this array list now what i'll do answer is equals to zero i have to find all the numbers in range one to n right which are valid so i is equals to zero valid numbers dot size i plus plus the current number is just see what is the current valid number if that number is less than equals to n answer plus equals to current number into current number basic stuff right and then you return your answer obviously you can break it as well else just break it these are optimizations but yeah since i was giving contest I, I wrote it quickly right again as i've been telling you in other videos um you can do optimization but obviously going to the most optimal solution in the first go is something that we generally do not do right in interviews or whenever you see a question right uh, if our algorithm should work right that is not the real world scenario that happens right so this is what we have done now let's come to the is 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 valid function right now whatever i told you you pass the string here just a second yeah you pass the string here and the remaining sum now if your remaining sum at any point of time becomes less than zero you return false what is the true condition that you are left with no characters and your remaining sum is also zero okay remaining sum is also zero so you return true now the core logic you insert you, you start with false and you try out every possible substring okay i is equals to zero nums dot length this what is the current substring that i am comparing uh, sorry considering so the, if this is my uh, string that i i have to basically partition to get a remaining sum i start with first this string then this then this and so on so that is why current is nums dot substring zero i plus one okay i will vary what is the value integer dot percent of the current value okay converting it into integer so that i can uh, now pass the residual value in the uh, next function so answer or equals to is valid this is the remaining substring that means if this is my substring i am considering this substring right so let's pass the remaining ones with the remaining sum so nums dot substring i plus one and remaining some minus val okay basic basic i would say uh not basic but very trivial backtracking thing okay now at any particular point of time if someone returns true your answer will become true again you can do an optimization that as soon as it becomes true i basically break the loop yes that is possible but since the length of the string was not large i did not add it why the length is not large because the last number that you can have is thousand square of thousand can be this so just see how many possible partitions can be there right it's very less 
and that's why i did that in case the range would have been high i would have added optimization thing that okay break here break here but ultimately the major time that would have uh, we have spent on is basically in this backtracking code so the more you optimize it the better your uh, basically complexity will be right so yeah this is what you do and finally uh, you return your answer which tells that can i partition this string um, and get a sum uh, which is equals to the remaining sum just see can i partition nums to get remaining sum right and i've already shown you uh, a dry run for this one right i've already shown you that how to partition one two nine six getting it you start with one two nine six and thirty six the first thing that you do is uh, you you just consider this thing one so now you'll call the function with two nine six and thirty five now in the next step what you'll do you'll just consider this you'll call the function with ninety six and thirty three getting it now what you'll do you'll you'll consider nine you'll pass the function with this and twenty four okay then again you'll consider this pass the function with empty string and 18 and so on right now this path is not working so what do you will do you will come here all right then you will come here you consider both of them if this becomes negative you will come here now instead of considering only two you will consider 29 and so on right basically that is formed uh, so yeah that's it for this solution uh, this is how you solve these type of questions a pre-computation is uh, very helpful in these cases but yeah the constraints were low so you can even avoid it you can do that on, on runtime right so yeah that's it for the solution uh, if you learn something new do support it by giving up a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel also in case you have any queries mention that in the comment section i'll revert on each one of them thank you take care bye bye